Virginia, a father of two talented teenagers, Kaylee and Lance III. He is a lover of books, the Dallas Cowboys, and the founder of his own mentoring organization for millennials named Airborne. His one word is legacy. Now after praise and worship, let's prepare to hear the word of God from the man of God, Lance Watson Jr. himself. Amen, amen. Good morning, Mount Hope. We serve a great and mighty God, amen. So glad to be in the house of the Lord just one more time because he woke us up this morning. He let us see another day that we've never seen before. In spite of the circumstances we face, he's still great and mighty. Hallelujah. Come on, put your hands together wherever you are. We come to let you know we serve a great and mighty God. Great and mighty is he. Great and mighty is he. Lord and glory, oh, great and splendor. Great and mighty is he. Let me hear you say great. Glory, 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 yeah. obey and splendor, great and mighty is he. Everybody say great. Great and mighty is he. Oh, oh, oh. Great and mighty is he. Glory, 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 obey and splendor, great and mighty is he. Let us lift his name on high. Let us lift his name on high. Oh. Hello. 
is the mighty God. And that's why we can say this week, it will be a week of miracles. Hallelujah. We've been going through so many things, but we believe it. He said it before. He can do it again. Amen. I cannot explain it. This may not make sense. I know what it looks like, but I choose to go against that. And I'm speaking something different. I'm speaking something different. I'm claiming something different. Expecting something different. Say. I cannot explain it. This may not make sense. I know how to I know what it looks like, but I choose to go against that. And I'm speaking, and I'm speaking something different. I'm speaking something different. Claim it. I'm claiming something different. This may, this not, may not make sense. Oh, I know what it looks but I like. Choose but I choose to go. go what can I And I'm speaking. I'm speaking something different. I'm speaking something different. I'm claiming. I'm claiming something different. Expecting. Expecting something different. Say, I can. I cannot explain this it. This may not, not make sense. Oh, oh, oh. I know what it looks but I like. Choose but I choose to go. go. And I'm speaking, and I'm speaking something different. Yeah. Speaking something different. Yeah. Claiming something different. Yeah. Expecting something different. Say this week, this week will be, will be a week for a week for miracles. miracles. Say this week, this week will be, will be a week for a week for miracles. miracles. Say this week, this week will be, will be a week for a week for miracles. Don't 
Lord, that type is on the way. Whatever you've been praying for, whatever you've been seeking for, it's on the way. Your miracle is on the way. Yes, it is. Your miracle is on the way. Yeah. Your miracle is on the way. It's on the way. Your miracle is on the way. It's on the way. Yes, Your it is. Your miracle is on the way. I receive it, Your my love. Your miracle is on the way. Yeah, yeah. Your miracle is on the way. Oh. Your miracle is on the way. They're going to thank him for it. Going to praise him for it. It's already done. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, God. And that's why we come to worship you, God. Because what you've done in the past, you can do it again, God, and we thank you. You're a mighty God. You're an awesome God. Here I am to worship. Here I am to bow down, and here I am to say that you're my God, you're all together lovely, all together worthy, and all together wonderful to me.
Here I am to say that you're my God. You're all together, I need all together worthy. And you're all together wonderful to me. That's why we bless your name, God. Come on, brother, you say he's worthy. He's awesome. Hallelujah. And he's all together. A great God. Hallelujah. That's why we worship you, oh God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Yeah. visitors, friends. I thank you for inviting me, for having me here at Mount Hope Baptist Church for the Young Adult and Youth Sunday. And uh, we're going to get right into it. Before we do, let us seek the aid of our God. Amen. Let us pray. Precious Lord, we thank you for the space and the place to gather online, though virtually one from another, we thank you for connecting us using your broad band. We thank you for the opportunity to continue to spread the gospel and the good news. Lord knows we need it. Lord, we pray for those who are without. We pray for those who intended to be online but didn't make it. We pray for those who are in suffering or having a hard time this morning. Lift them up where they're weak. Make them strong. Lord, and last but not least, we pray for preaching power in your minister in this hour. Pray that all that you have inculcated through my study and hard work will help express the guarantee of the gospel, the testimony of the text. I promise to be faithful in my service to you. Send me, O oh Lord. It's now in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. The hope. I am so glad to be here. I would be remiss if I did not acknowledge the shepherd of the house, Dr. Raymond Bell. I thank you so much for having me, sir. And I want to thank the young adult and the youth of this ministry and of this branch of Zion for having me um, from your media team, putting stuff on social media and the web to your wonderful ministry of music and Brother Gray and company singing and ushering in the Holy Spirit this morning. It has been a blessing just to make it up the road from Richmond, Virginia to Fredericksburg. Amen. Listen, I know y'all are young people and I'm, I'm, I'm still sort of kind of young, so I know that we, uh, we don't tarry too long, so I'm not going to spend a lot of your time. There's a psalm that says, blessed are the brief for they may be invited again. You have to look that up. It's in the Bible somewhere. But listen, we're going to jump right into it. Um, the message will be coming from a very familiar psalm to the seasoned saints, Psalm 118, verse 24. And I'm just going to read one verse, and then we're going to have ourselves a good time in worship. Uh, the verse says, Psalm 118, 24, This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. I just want to stress the beginning of that one more time. This is the day. The tag of my sermonic presentation this morning is make it today. Just make it today. Amen? 
Brothers and sisters of Mount Hope Baptist Church, visitors and friends online, I don't know about you, but every now and then, I have to have a little talk with Jesus. I have to tell the Lord about how my day is going. I have to sit down, I have to grab my electronic devices, phone and all of that, and shut it down. And I have to really talk to God and pray about how my day is going. And I wish to recount how I've learned a few lessons over the years and how to make the most of my day using the inspiration from Psalm 118, 24. I would like to let you eavesdrop young people on these meditations. I'm sure that there are many seasoned saints who could give you a tale about the days where they struggled like Reverend Paul Jones. You know what he said. I've had some good days. I've had some hills to climb. I've had some weary days. I've had some sleepless nights. But when I look around and I think things over, all my good days outweigh my bad days, and I won't complain. And and even when we have those bad days, we got to find it within ourselves by commission to say, thank you, Lord. That's what the psalmist is getting at. That this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Do you know what I'm talking about, young people of Mount Hope? That, that, That I'm here to serve notice that there's a way for us to rejoice today. And it requires us to forget about two things. Two of these days that we go through in our lives, we can just... Go ahead and flush them, get them on out the way. Two days that will no longer last forever, forevermore. And these two days that we no longer have to worry about, no longer have to have anxiety about or apprehension about, for all our days forevermore, I'm going to share with you about. One of them days is yesterday. Yesterday, all the mistakes, all the problems, all the cares, all the aches, pains, mishaps, mistakes, missteps, mysteries, and frustrations get to have a seat. Yesterday, it's passed beyond our control. The sun is setting on yesterday forever. A memory soon forgotten and a turn page. And I'm sorry to tell you that even if you've been able to get through life long enough to have a good old day, a back in the day or a heyday, that's gone forever, baby. That, that many of us, our springtime is working its way to fall, and, and, and it's passed from the timeline of our, our existence. So, so yesterday being gone, while many of us long to return to the circumstances, you know, no mask, no social distancing, and all of that, that while many of us long to return to those fond memories of yesterday, I can't deny the testimony online that there are some of us who don't want to. There are some of us who don't long to go back to yesterday because yesterday, for those of us who have lived a little while, it's filled with impurity, indiscretion, indecency, and some mishaps. You know, if we look back, we might go back if not just for a throwback. And so uh, we're being chased by yesterday still, and now instead of looking back, we're pressing forward, looking to the hills from which prayerfully comes our help. The other day that we no longer need to worry about is tomorrow. If yesterday is today's memory, then tomorrow is today's dream. The sun will rise tomorrow in its heavenly splendor, or it will peek through a veil of clouds, but it will rise, and until it does, you and I have no stake in it. Someone has been locked out of God's blessing forevermore because they trusted in tomorrow. Let me make it plain for you. This morning, there was an alarm clock on a phone that went off, and no one snoozed it because they put too much trust in tomorrow. Tomorrow is a hope, but we, do, we should no longer worry about it forevermore. Now, I know that some of you may be wondering, what about the bad days? 
I want to get to tomorrow because today is not a great day. And I'm glad to share with you that even a bad day is still a good day if you're in it to rejoice. Amen. And that means that you still have an opportunity to go on. You still have an opportunity to rejoice. This is the day that the Lord has made. This is not self-deception, young people. This is not a delusion. It's a consecrated conclusion because even Jesus talked about paradise on the worst day of his life. In an age where 24 hours feels like minutes, we are reminded by the children who live moment to moment, having very little understanding of the here and now and the time that tomorrow is actually further away than we'd like to believe. Have you ever tried to talk to a young person about opening gifts tomorrow on Christmas Eve? They'll explain to you very quickly, mama, daddy, sister, brother, nephew, niece, that th th that's a long ways off. Jesus told the disciples, therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry all about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. So there's really only one day. This is my conclusion, that there's only one day that should capture our joy, enrapture our spirit, focus our enthusiasm, muster all of our strength, garner our concern, grab our attention, because it's the only day that matters, and that day is today. This is the day that the Lord has made. The Lord saw fit to deliver you and I, though we are one from another, and we are virtually connected to this day. It's another day to fight your battles, another day to overcome your obstacles, another day to hold on and hang out. I, I wish I had just a few testimonies online who could rejoice about being in today. I have to make sure that someone who needed to have their burdens lifted and some encouragement, you know, because with the mask on, you can't quite see my countenance. So I'm walking around thinking that everyone is feeling the same way that I am, or perhaps I'm all by myself because I can't see a smile. That I'm all in this by myself, but God is giving us another day to deal with our struggles, to deal with our problems, to get in a little good trouble, like uh, my brother John Lewis, rest his soul, that, that we have another day to make a difference, another day to work through our challenges. Someone has missed the opportunity because they were ready to break yesterday or but they didn't realize that yesterday was only going to become today and they were worried about tomorrow. And so instead of getting ready to do something about their lives today, they looked at tomorrow and they hoped and trusted in tomorrow. But this is the day that the Lord has made. The 27th Proverbs says it this way, come now you who say today or tomorrow, well, we will go to this city and go to that city and go to this beach, and that's my own remix right there, and go to that beach, spend a year here, carry on business there, get someone to sign up for a savings club, make a little profit, that, that you do not even know what will happen tomorrow. What is your life? You are but a mist that appears for a little while and then it vanishes. Instead, the scripture tells us we ought to say, if the Lord is willing, we can do this, we can do that. It, it, it means for us simply, brothers and sisters, young people too, that, that even on Saturday when you're getting ready to get online and you're adding it to your watch list on YouTube or on Facebook because you know that Dr. Bell is going to be on and we're going to have a good time online. It means that even on Saturday when you're getting ready, go ahead and rejoice the Lord. Don't wait. On Friday, when you are just urged and ready to get off work and you're ready to get off online from school and you're excited about what the weekend is going to bring, don't wait to celebrate. Do it now. Do it today. On Wednesday, Thursday, Tuesday, Monday. Rejoice in the Lord today. For the Lord is good. 
The psalmist lived in the present tense in the 118th Psalm, 24th verse. Y'all know it goes way back for me. That's Sunday school memory material right there, amen? But at the beginning of the psalm, in the very first verse of the 118th Psalm, the psalmist encourages us to give thanks to the Lord for God is worthy. Watsonize it. God is worth it and concludes that psalm with the same sentiment. Give thanks, not yesterday, not tomorrow. Give thanks today. A thankful heart is the very foundation of faith. Out of 29 verses in the psalm, the punctuation of verse 24 is the crescendo. Thank you, Fine Arts Ministry. It's the crescendo of the psalm. It tells us right there that this is the height of their exaltation. This is the apex of the story, that this is the day that the Lord has made. And I will rejoice, and I will be glad in it. So no, the 24th, the 24th verse of the 118th Psalm is not just another piece of poetic verse. It is the top of the story. It's the top of the testimony. So without a day that the psalmist lived in, if they did not have a day as they were writing the psalm, then they would not have had the opportunity to rejoice. They had to live and express it in the present. So for this day, the psalmist composed the text and recognized it as a creation of a God who's worth it. Beloved, God wants us to be happy. God wants us to value. God wants us to be enthusiastic, extremely joyful of this day. Oh, I wish I had somebody happy about it. Time is a coin. It's a coin. It's the only coin that we have, and only you and I get to determine how we're going to spend that coin. Be careful lest you let people and preoccupations and powers of the world and social media distract you from the only thing that is really worth spending your coins on. This day is the currency of the current. It is the gift of the present. It is the knowledge of right now. It's a great place to begin to rejoice. Today is a starting place. From right where God delivered you and I, we can give praise and go higher, or we can yoke ourselves to yesterday, we can tether ourselves to tomorrow, and we can go lower. We can regress, or we can progress. We can retreat, or we can pass on. Yesterday is a tomb. Tomorrow is a womb that may still be stillborn, but today is a good day to rejoice. Let me encourage someone who is toiling in today's duty, fight through today's temptation. Be determined not to be weakened and distracted by looking back at what you cannot change and trying to look forward to what you wouldn't understand if you saw it. Tell, your, tell somebody, look to who's next to you on the sofa. Tell them, do it today. Do today what should be done. Rejoice today. That is because the Lord is worth it. Do it now. Be glad to, about what the writer of the psalm is telling us and watch how God will bless your soul today. Can I push it a little bit? Amen. Ask yourself, young people, hey, hey, in this case, even seasoned saints, ask yourself, how do we value a year? How do we value the year, the day, the whole lot of todays that God is giving us? I don't know. Ask a student that had to fail a grade. Ask them, how do they value a year? It, how do we value a month? I don't know. Don't ask me. Ask a mother who has had to give birth to a premature baby. You know, how do we value a week? Don't ask me. Ask someone who is waiting on an unemployment check to pay their bills. You know, it, how do we value an hour? Don't ask me. Ask someone who is terminally ill, waiting for a loved one who is running late in D.C. traffic. Look, don't ask 
ask me about how we value a minute, ask someone who's missed a plane, a train, an automobile. Ask someone about how they value a second. Don't ask me. Ask the Olympic medalist who missed it by a split. You understand what I'm saying? That in this day and age, we have to rejoice today. Yesterday is gone. Tomorrow is uncertain. Rejoice today. When you have that unction, a reason for joy and rejoicing that you don't even understand yourself, go ahead and stop the car, pull it on over, and rejoice. Because those days, trust me, young people, are few and far in between one another. Wake up feeling good for no reason. Wait till you get to my age. Woo, Jesus. Roll out of bed in the day already bad. <laughs> but, but, but we must be glad and we must rejoice. Can I help you today? I want to help anyone and everyone watching with Mount Hope this morning to make the most out of today and then I'm out your way. First, um, the Lord wants us to slip away from yesterday. Here, here's what I want you to hear. Loose yourself from the hardship of this week, this month, and this year. Let it go. Don't let politics, pause, trump your attention of God's gift every day. Don't let the tragedy of police shootings, pause, lock down your joy. Don't let money, pause, shortchange your joy. You see, we got to slip away from yesterday. It's gone. It's over today. Yesterday ends today. This is the testimony in verse 5 of our psalm. Out of my distress, I called on the Lord, and the Lord answered me. And what? And set me free. There's a certain liberty, there's a certain freedom, there's a certain joy when we recognize that each day we get is God's gift. Jesus observed this practice. He would oftentimes slip away. Y'all trying to act like he, he you know, that was a black man. I don't care what nobody say. He would slip away for a little while slide off for a little while and fellowship with God. Sometimes he would take a boat and sail upon the sea. He would retreat to the mountainside and meditate. Now, my brothers and sisters, we also have the powerful opportunity to take all of our cares of yesterday and go walking with God. Walk with God in prayer. Psalm 119, 164 says it this way, seven times a day I do praise thee. A moment by moment fellowship with God over every meal when you rise up and when you retire, when you get to midday, mid-afternoon, and mid-evening, walk with the Lord in prayer. This is how we talk to God. The psalmist chose to sing it, but you can slip a conversation in with God into any of your two days. Make the most of your commute. Amen. When you're going to school online, say a couple of words. When you're shopping at the mall, nope, that's over with. Let's talk about Amazon. When you're going to the grocery store, when you're visiting someone at the hospital, talk to the Lord. Rejoice and be glad because you can be assured that God is listening. Not only can we make the most of today by slipping away and talking to God, but we also got to listen. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go slow right here, young people. Communication is a two-way street. So you got talking, and then you got some listening that you got to do. Uh, so if praying is talking to God, Oh, Heavenly Father, precious Lord, that we're, we're, we're talking to God. That when we talk to God, guess what? God talks back to us. And so the way that we can hear God, there's a number of ways, but I'm going to just give you one. We can read the words of God. It's almost like a text message. Don't keep the Lord with the little three dots waiting on your response. Just, just, we can read the Word of God, and God is always sending us a text message. Y'all get that after y'all log off. He's sending us a text message all the time, but we must read the text message. So, listening to God is reading the Word. 
Through the Holy Scriptures, God will speak to you. God will guide you. God will direct you. The Word is a lamp. The Word is a light. It will illuminate your darkest hour. Just walk with the Lord in the Word. Here's a couple of ideas. Stroll through the sublime scenery of Eden. Marvel at the architectural genius of Nimrod at the Tower of Babel. Tread the flood waters with Noah. Walk with faith by Abram. Laugh at the baby shower with Sarah. Observe the wrestling of Jacob and the angel. Dream with Joseph. March with Moses. Toast manna and marshmallows in the wilderness. Pray with Samuel. Sing with David. Rule with Solomon. Share preaching notes with all the prophets, minor and major. Waltz into Jerusalem. Take a casual stroll by an empty tomb and praise God. Rejoice because this is the day that the Lord has made. God will talk back to you, but you got to read the text. God will help you to see that today is a day to be glad, and listening to the Lord when you walk with the Lord will take you higher, it'll take you further, and it will nourish your soul. No matter what happened yesterday, no matter what you anticipate tomorrow, today, learn to enjoy the little things. You know, I have two teenagers. And I oftentimes tell them that boredom is a luxury of youth. I wish I could be bored waking up every day, but every day carries with it its own little burden. Amen? And so, and so I, you, we got to learn how to just enjoy the little things. You know, slow it down and enjoy today. You can't rejoice in the day if you don't take your time with the day. We're so busy that the days become blurry. So we miss it. We miss our opportunity to be glad if we're honest. So, so, so where do you find in the Bible where Jesus rushed anywhere? Even when his homeboy was dying, we're always rushing, always in a hurry. This reminds me of a tale that I heard, and I want to share it with y'all. A few explorers, they went on to Africa, and from the moment they set foot on the plains, they were rushing with the guides here and there and ripping and running all over the countryside until one morning after about three or four days of this busy, crazy schedule, the explorers woke up nice and early. They had their itinerary ready to go explore some more until they noticed that all the guides were sitting around a campfire cooking bacon. And so they look at the gods and they're just like, hey man, don't you know it's time for us to depart? We got a busy schedule today. And the African god said, no, 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 not today. Today we rest and let our souls catch up with our body. That, that, that what they're really trying to get at is that we must enjoy the time. Take the time. When we honor God's gift of today, when we take time to enjoy the little things, playing becomes a source of our youth. Reading becomes the foundation of wisdom. Friendship becomes the road to happiness. Praying becomes the greatest power that we have with God. Contemplation, a source of steadfastfulness. Worship is the only way that we can influence and affect the eternal. And love is our God-given privilege. Laughter, the music of the soul. Learn to laugh at yourself. Seriously. Learn to laugh about yourself sometimes, especially when your serious self doubted and God delivered you safely and without harm to today, without a scratch. A little boy came home from church one day and he told his parents, I want to be a preacher when I grow up. And they were a little glad about it, but they were curious, you know, because it came out of nowhere. And they said, why? And he said, well, I figure that it's easier to stand up and shout than it is to sit down and shut up. Amen. We got to enjoy the little things. This is how we make the most of today. And this is how we rejoice and become glad in it. Not only must we learn to enjoy the little things, but we got to show appreciation to the day 
to God for the day. Um, real quick, pause for a shameless commercial. On behalf of the Hope and behalf of churches everywhere, since we're all now under one virtual sanctuary, can you please do me a favor? I would like you to serve by sharing. It'll cost you nothing for a limited time only. I would like you to serve by sharing. Click share when you're done. We praise God for you and we thank you. But sharing each day is how we show appreciation for each day. If you pit stop in Acts 10 verse 38, it records that Jesus went about all about doing good through the town. This is the pathway to joy. Do something for somebody. Share today. It's the greatest thing that we can do. Give comfort. Encourage others. Seek to aid those in grief. People grappling with illness or COVID. Give confidence to someone who is frustrated and disappointed. This is how the songwriter wrote, if I can help somebody along the way. If I can cheer somebody with a word or song, if I can show some traveler he's going the wrong way, my living will not have been in vain. Share your day. Now, I know you're listening to me. You may have made a few notes, retweeted a few things, and I'm almost done. But, but I realized that I might have lost some of y'all with the idea of walking heavy about doing for others, right? We live in this it's about me generation. You ain't got to take my word for it. I just came from the Wegmans around the corner and a whole bunch of folks didn't have no mask on. That ain't none of us in this room recording, but, but a whole bunch of folks ain't had no mask on at the hotel, on the highway. On, you know. so, so what I'm saying is we live in a society where we're focused on ourselves and I know that that's countercultural for me to ask you to share your day, your time, your energy with other people, young people. I used to be a young person. But, but, but I want you to know that it may be a secret to some folks that most of the time we get stuck in yesterday, focused on tomorrow because we fail to do something for ourselves. We don't feel good about doing it for others because we have failed to do it for ourselves. You see, people can make today really difficult to enjoy. So if you'd allow me, let me reset the mower, and as my daddy said, I'm gonna go after the tall grass real quick and then we're going to finish out. Here you go. Make the most of today by burying your resentment. From the executive branch of government, down. Bury your resentment. If you wake up every day and you're thinking about how much you can't stand somebody, the day is doomed. Just after verse 24, verse 25 is a lament to God. This is a cry to God to beseech, meaning to urgently do something about or to get something straight for me, Lord, for us to have this good success. So this is the day. Let go of your resentments. This is how we step towards happiness each and every day, by learning to forget or forgive. It's what Paul meant in Philippians 3, 13, verse 13 and uh, 14, when he said, forgetting what lies behind and reaching forward to what lies ahead. Press toward the mark. Everyone makes mistakes. All of us encounter a tough time dealing with neighbors. Jesus had disciples who argued around him all the time. He was buried by people holding on to resentment, holding on to what Moses said, what Abraham said. Resentment, because here's someone trying to love on people and not revering and saying that this lies above all. You want to put God above my ancestors? No, they had resentment. We got to let go of resentments. I'm going to Watsonize this thing one more time. Uh, you can't be glad with a grudge. Plain, simple. You cannot be glad with a grudge. This is how we make the most of today. When we talk with God, walk with God, do for others, and let go of your resentments, then we have the opportunity to praise God. We loose ourselves from the burden of yesterday and tomorrow, and we find peace. That's what this 
whole sermon is about. That when we rejoice, anxiety, angst, trouble, anger, all of that can be paused when we rejoice today, when we recognize that today is the day that the Lord has made. When we get to tomorrow, that's going to be a new today, and that will be the day that the Lord has made. We're going to keep on going through the week. The next day, that is the day that the Lord has made, and we should rejoice and be glad in it. Don't believe me? Come here, Old Testament. Oh, here's Brother Job. There, yesterday slayed me, yet I will trust. Come here, New Testament. In the epistle, faith is the things of the, the, the substance of things hoped for tomorrow, evidence of things unseen. That this is the idea we can get excited about today. Though we don't know what yesterday was about because we haven't seen tomorrow. We don't know what tomorrow will bring. This is the day that the Lord has made so powerful that he created all the heavens and the earth with a mighty word, so concerned with details not missing anything, nothing escaping God's eye, so personal that he counted all the hairs on your head, so good that enemies are made friends and friends into family, so true that we are assured that there's nothing that the Lord can't handle, so infinite that Jehovah is always there. So much joy in you that God created today just for you, young people. So you can shout, you can rejoice. This is the day. We can trust him for tomorrow. We can have joy today, but it affirms that yesterday has a hand in blessing us today. Lift your voices, type amen, clapping hand emojis. We can touch and agree virtually that this is the day that God has made. And we can rejoice. We can forget our resentments. We can pray and talk and hear from God by reading the word. And we can share with others. And it'll help us to make the most out of today. Yesterday cannot be changed. Tomorrow cannot be guaranteed. Today is yours. Rejoice today. So it has been said, so it has been done. Peace to you, Mount Hope. Let us pray. Precious Lord, we thank you for showing us a path to making the most out of every day that you've given us. We thank you for delivering us safely to today. There are many of us, including the wonderful and brave brother John Lewis, who we celebrated his legacy this weekend, that, that didn't make it to today. Among countless others who lived their lives to the most, they let go of resentments, they got in the fight with each and every day to find their joy, to find their rejoice to seek your face, to help your people, to share their lives with others. Lord, we, we pray right now for each and every person online, everyone who has visited Mount Hope this morning online and, and elsewhere. Lord, we pray for them right now that you will help them though the sun is shining and it's baking outside, that they will find their way to joy. Lord, we pray right now that that sun might not only shine down on this earthly tabernacle, but it might also shine in the hearts of those who are in the dark. Those of, of your people who have not been in communication with you, who have not called on your name, they have not learned anything about repenting. Lord, we pray that they make this the day, recognizing that this day is the day that you have made giving them another opportunity. They just escaped yesterday. They don't know what's coming tomorrow. So we thank you for them. We thank you for delivering them here to Mount Hope Online. We thank you for the word that will go out to the reaches of the earth. 
through the World Wide Web and those who have felt the unction to share. They got everything right. They're calling on you through prayer. They're reading in the Word. They don't really have a lot of resentments, but today they decided to share. And so we thank you for the sharing of this Word, for the sharing of their rejoice and their joy of today. We thank you for the testimony of the text. Thank you for the guarantee of the gospel that if they but believe, confess with their mouths, believe with their hearts, they too will be guaranteed another today. Even though we pass from this existence into life eternal, Lord, we know that your sun will shine on our lives as we surrender ourselves to you. We thank you, Lord, for each and every person represented here, all of the people that help make this happen week to week, those who are on their journey watching by cell phone or by tablet or by computer, Lord, we thank you for them. Let them depart from this place as we conclude the worship service today with a sense of joy and knowing that they are not alone that we are together in this. That as sure as the sun, sun rises and the sun sets, we are together in this. It's not always easy to rejoice, but we thank you, Lord, for this is today. We thank you today. In Jesus' name, your son who died on the cross for our sins, we pray, amen. Thank you, my hope.